all my respectful and lively audiences. Welcome to my today's presentation. Just we will start by looking at a case scenario. Just my today's presentation focuses on problem based learning. So let us consider this case scenario. Ms. X is 14 weeks pregnant woman from her last demonstration period. She came to your health facility with complaint of minimal vaginal bleeding of one day duration. On physical examination, her uterus is just uh, two fingers above symphysis pubis and her cervix is closed and fetal uh, membrane is also intact. So the question comes now. What is the most probable diagnosis of Marie's X condition? A. Treated abortion. B. Inevitable abortion. C. Incomplete abortion. D. Complete abortion. So next question. What is the appropriate management of Marie's X case? A. Dilation and evacuation. B. Pelvic arrest and follow up. C. Operation or MVA. And D. Just medical abortion. Let us proceed to the next case. The next case says Mary's Y is 18 weeks pregnant woman when calculated from her uh, uh, first ultrasound and she is having her vaginal bleeding. I mean, heavy vaginal bleeding and some fatal parts expelled. And her uterus size approximately is, uh, 14 weeks on abdominal palpation and her cervix is dilated. So the question is, what is the most probable diagnosis of Marie's wife's condition? A. Treatment abortion. B. Inevitable abortion. C. Incomplete abortion. D. Complete abortion. The next question, what is the appropriate management uh, for Marie's wife's condition? A. Evacuate the uterus by using MVA, manual vacuum aspiration. B. Infuse oxygen. Uh, 14 international unit in one liter of normal saline or linger lactate by 40 droppies per minute uh, just to uh, facilitate uh, expulsion of the product of conception uh, and uh, she says uh, use single dose of ergometrin which is 0.2 milligram uh, or misoprostol 400 uh, microgram let us proceed to the next So the next case says uh, Ms. F is gravida 3, para 2 mother, at 19 weeks of gestational age as calculated from her last menstruation period and she had signs and symptoms of pregnancy until last two weeks. But now she is not experiencing them. Also she has no vaginal bleeding and abdominal cramping, her uterine size approximately to 16 weeks of gestational age on physical examination. So the first question is, what is the most probable diagnosis of Mary's F's condition? A. Septic abortion. B. Recurrent abortion. C. Mystery abortion. D. Blight on the bone. The next question, what is the appropriate management of Mary's F's case? A. Either expectant management or immediate evacuation as per as the woman's choice. B. Dilation and cruelty immediately. C. Just using protocol for second trimester abortion and giving an TD immunoglobulin 300 microgram intramuscular start since his second trimester experience. So, all these questions will be answered at the end of this season. So, let you attentively follow my presentation. So, let us see the introduction part of abortion now. Uh, so, abortion is common health problem and major public health problem worldwide. And also, unsafe abortion is one of the leading cause of maternal deaths all over the world. Generally, 15% of all pregnancies end in spontaneous abortion. Let us look at the epidemiology of abortion. Globally, greater than 25 million unsafe abortions occur every year resulting in 7 million admission to health facility for complications and around 23,000 to 31 maternal days annually. So, 
uh, 7% of unsafe abortions occur in low and middle income countries. Just I have uh, gotten this information from the reference I have indicated here. So for further reading, you can refer it. Uh, let us look at what abortion is. Abortion is termination of pregnancy before reaching the stage of fetal viability. When I say fetal viability, is the ability of the fetus to survive extrauterine life. So, in developed country, abortion is defined as termination of pregnancy before 20 weeks of gestational age and fetal weight less than 20 uh, less than 500 grams. In a developed, developing country, it is defined as termination of pregnancy before 28 weeks of gestational age and a fetal weight is less than 1,000 grams. So, the causes of abortion include chromosomal abnormality, either the abnormality is on the number of the chromosome or if problem is with the structure of the chromosome. So, chromosomal abnormality accounts for 50 to 60 percent of early spontaneous abortion. So when we consider the problem related with the number of chromosomes, polyploidy, triploidy, monosomy are the common. And when we consider the structural abnormalities, just chromosomal break, translocation, and relation. The so other causes are infection, either viral, bacterial, or others, radiation exposure such as X-ray chemical exposure, just such as uh, mercury, lead, cadmium, uh, uh, and uh, smoking, medical disorders including diabetes mellitus, hypothyroidism, and others. And the other is uterine disorder, such as uterine septum, tumors, and the other is cervical incompetence. These are only the common, just there are also a lot other. Let us look at the pathophysiology by which abortion occurs. The first one, mostly it starts with the death of embryo or just rudimentary analog if there is tumor or uh, other abnormalities. So uh, this leads into hemorrhage into the decidial basalis, that means hemorrhage under the placental bed. So this leads into uterine contraction and dilation of cervix. If the trunk contraction and dilation of cervix is there, finally expulsion of product of conception will flow. Will flow. So let us proceed to classification of abortion. Generally, there are different ways of classifying abortion. The first one, it can be classified based on the onset of abortion. So depending on the onset of abortion, abortion can be classified as spontaneous and induced abortion. The other thing is Depending on the uh, clinical features of abortion, there are around seven classification and the first one is written abortion, inevitable abortion, incomplete abortion, complete abortion, missed abortion, recurrent abortion, and septic abortion. We will see all of them one by one within this session. So let you follow me my presentation until it is end. So Depending on gestational age, abortion can be classified into two as early abortion if abortion occur less than 10, 12 weeks of gestational age. And it can be called late abortion if it occurred in between 12 to 28 weeks of gestational age. So depending on just uh, the way how induced abortion is undertaken, induced abortion can be classified into two as safe abortion if it, the abortion, safe, I mean, in the induced abortion is done by a trained person with safe technique in sanitary, uh, sanitary facilities is called safe abortion. But if it is in opposite, it induced abortion is called unsafe abortion. So I mean, if the induced abortion is done either by untrained person or with hazardous technique in a sanitary facility. So, let us look at the uh, clinical classifications of abortion one by one. So the first one is treatment abortion. So treatment abortion is vaginal bleeding of uterine region with closed cervix and intact fetal membrane. So induced, I mean, treatment abortion occur in about 20% uh, to 30% of all pregnancies and in most cases it presents, yes, it represents only implantation bleeding, which means uh, normal. 
So, uh, treating the abortion have the possible outcome either just progression to normal pregnancy or progression into inevitable abortion. It do have different differential diagnosis, including complete abortion, ectopic pregnancy in an ruptured tube, cervical polyp, cervical carcinoma, decisional trophoblastic disease, trauma, or frame body injury uh, can reveal the same clinical finding with treatment abortion, so the care provider should have to roll out them. Let us look at the management of treatment abortion. So, uh, there is no effective therapy, effective medical therapy for treatment in treatment pregnancy other than pelvic race. So, uh, the healthcare provider should advise the woman to avoid extraneous physical activity and sexual intercourse until all the thing is uh, just returned to normal. So, if bleeding stop, follow the woman in antenatal care clinic and also uh, reassess if bleeding recurs. Let us look at the second just uh, abortion, which is inevitable abortion. So, in inevitable abortion, there is heavy vaginal bleeding of the trainer, uh, origin during pregnancy, so no tissue pads yet, except possible amniotic fluid. Cervical os is dilated and effect in this case, and uh, crampy lower abdominal pain, cramp fever, and uh, some may have cervical motion or adenexal uh, tenderness. So, the management of inevitable abortion depends on the gestational age. So, if the pregnancy is less than 12 weeks, evacuate the uterus just by using MVA or other things, but using MVA is the safest of all. So, if the evacuation is not immediately possible, give ergometrin 0.2 mg intramuscularly and uh, repeat after 15 minutes if necessary. And also you can use, uh, if you don't have ergometrin, you can use misoprostol uh, 400 microgram by mouse, repeat it once after 4 hours if necessary, and then arrange for evacuation of the uterus as soon as possible. Uh, if pregnancy is greater than 12 this week, await spontaneous expulsion of the product of conception and then evacuate the uterus to remove any remaining products of conception. If necessary, infuse oxygen, uh, 40 international unit in 1 liter IV fluid, either uh, you can use normal saline or linger lactate at 40 drops per minute to help achieve expulsion of product of conception. So, suction crutage or Evacuation and crutage, depending on the gestational age, can also be used. Even if they do have a lot of uh, complications that may follow them. After then, you should have to ensure follow-up of the woman after all treatment given. Let us proceed to incomplete abortion. Incomplete abortion is due to partial passage of conceptus tissue, except amniotic fluid, which is considered as inevitable abortion or uh, previable abortion. So, when I am saying this, to diagnose incomplete abortion, if only amniotic fluid is drained with vaginal bleeding is not the diagnostic measure. So, some part of the fetal or the embryo or placenta should be passed to say it is incomplete abortion. Uh, so, before uh, 10 weeks of gestation, the placenta and fetus are generally passed together. That means they generally pass together, expelled out of the uterus together, attached together. But after this time, that means after uh, 10 weeks of gestational age, placenta and uh, the fetal or the embryo part, just uh, the fetal part, just expel separately. Incomplete abortion is characterized by one, vaginal bleeding, open cervical loss, passage of tissue, and well, somehow severe lower abdominal uh, cramping pain. So its management uh, depends on the severity of uh, the vaginal bleeding and also the gestational age. So if the gestational age is less than 12 weeks and if the bleeding is light to moderate, just uh, use fingers or sponge forceps to remove products of conception protruding through the cervix. And also, if bleeding is heavy and pregnancy is greater than just less than 12 weeks, evacuate the uterus. So, for evacuating the uterus, you can use MVA 
and uh, just if evacuation is not immediately possible it's the same as so if gestational age is uh, greater than uh, 12 weeks just and if evacuation is not immediately possible as the same with uh, the case of inevitable abortion give ergometrin 0.2 milligram intramuscularly and repeat once after 15 minutes if necessary or you can use misoprostol 400 microgram orally just you can repeat it if necessary after four hours only once and just if pregnancy is greater than 12 weeks infuse oxytocin 14 international unit in one a liter of IV fluid, either normal saline or linger lactate at 40 drops per minute until expulsion of products of conception occurs. If necessary, give misoprostol 200 microgram, just only 200 microgram, uh, vaginally every four hours until expulsion. So, uh, let you consider why the uh, dose of micro, I mean, misoprostol reduced here, just as uh, gestational age increase the dose of uh, misoprostol we need to use or need to be decreased uh, but do not administer more than 800 microgram evaluate any remaining products of conception after uh, just from the uterus and you need to administer prophylactic antibiotics just especially a uh, dog cycling 200 milligram start just intramuscularly once or you can also give 100 milligram BID for three days. And then you need to ensure follow up of the woman after the treatment. Let us look at complete abortion. So, in case of complete abortion, evacuation of the uterus is not necessary. Just observe for heavy bleeding if present and provide all necessary post abortion care and follow up the woman after the treatment. Let us look at missed abortion. So, in case of missed abortion, there is a death of fetus or embryo inside the uterus before age of viability and immediate evacuation of the uterus is preferred treatment. But the treatment choice between expectant management and immediate evacuation should depend on the woman's informed decision. So we should have to respect for the patient's own choice. Own choice. Just if she uh, choice to expect for it is spontaneous expulsion, just let we respect it. If she just prefer immediate evacuation, let it be done. But it should depend on the woman's own informed decision. Uh, again, expectant management is possible for three weeks with assessment of coagulation profile every week. So risk of disseminated intravascular coagulation is very low before 15 weeks of gestational age. So, nearly 80% of missed abortion results in spontaneous expulsion within three weeks of expectant management. Uh, so, if immediate uh, evacuation is uh, decided, uh, one has to use protocol for yes, induced abortion. Let us look at. Uh, uh, so, recurrent abortion is defined as three or more consecutive spontaneous abortions. Uh, it is incidence is 1% of all spontaneous abortions and the risk of having spontaneous abortion after experiencing recurrent abortion is 30%. Just the double uh, risk of developing spontaneous abortion when compared to general pregnant women. The etiologies of recurrent abortion include chromosomal abnormality, uterine malformation, cervical incompetence, anti-phospholipid syndrome, and around 50% have no definitive cause. Treatment is cause-specific, depending on the underlying cause. So, the last uh, clinical classification of abortion, the last part is septic abortion. So, septic abortion is any type of abortion complicated with infection. So, before taking measurement to expel product of conception, just a uh, broad spectrum antibiotics should be administered, just uh, preferably through uh, IV line. Let us come to the end. General consideration for abortion care for unsynthesized RH-negative mother, administer anti-D 
immunoglobulin 50 microgram intramuscular is start only once should be given for first trimester abortion just for first trimester abortion the dose is only 50 microgram uh, and administer anti -G gamma immunoglobulin 300 microgram intramuscular is start just for a woman who had who is just Rh negative and had her abortion during her second trimester. All components of post abortion care must be provided as necessary for all women who had uh, abortion. So let us answer the case scenarios we have seen first. So the first one reads okay, Mary's ex is 40 weeks pregnant woman. When calculated from her last menstruation period, and she came to your health facility with complaint of minimal vaginal bleeding of one day duration. On physical examination, her uterus is two fingers up, boxing past boobies. Her cervix is closed, and fetal weight is, I mean, fetal membrane is intact. So, in this case, since the uh, gestational is calculated from her own last menstruation period, is equal to what you have found on your physical examination. Just uh, you have found on physical examination just as two finger above the first boobies. So as the first boobies, the pregnancy approximates to 12 weeks. So one finger above the first boobies until the uterine size reach uh, the umbilicus approximates to one week. One finger presented to one week. So that uh, it is the same. And the cervix is closed now and the fetal membrane is intact. So the diagnosis of this woman is treated abortion. Have you gotten the answer? Thank you. So let us see the appropriate management of this case. Just as we have seen before, it should be pelvic rest and follow up since uh, no other medical uh, treatment can't be effective anymore. The second case, Maris Y is 18 weeks pregnant woman when calculated from her last, I mean her uh, Various trimester ultrasound finding. Uh, she is having heavy vaginal bleeding and some fatal part is expelled. Her uterine size approximate is 14 weeks on abdominal palpation and her cervix is dilated. So, what do you think the answer for this case? The most probable diagnosis of Mary's wife's condition is incomplete abortion. So, the treatment, uh, what is the appropriate management for this condition? For the problem you diagnose now, since the abortion is second trimester abortion, just infusing 14 international units of oxygen in one liter of normal saline or ringer lactate, just adjusting the drop rate to 40 drop per minute until the expulsion of her is appropriate management. The third case, Maurice Y is 16 weeks pregnant woman from her last normal station period. She complained severe lower abdominal cramping. She's having heavy vaginal bleeding and amniotic fluid drained up, but no fatal part is expelled yet. So, when you find the physical uh, finding is her uterine size approximates to 16 weeks of gestational age and her cervix is dilated. So, what do you think the most probable diagnosis? An inevitable abortion. What's the treatment? Similar with the Incomplete abortion. Option B is answered. Let us uh, look at the last case scenario. Maris F is gravidus repair to mother at 19 weeks of gestational age as calculated from her last menstruation period. And she had uh, signs and symptoms of pregnancy until last two weeks. But now she is not expressing them. Also, she has no vaginal breathing and abdominal cramping. Her uterine size approximately to 16 weeks of gestation early. What do you think the diagnosis? Mr. Portion. So what's the treatment? Either expectant management or immediate evacuation, depending on the woman's choice, is a proper answer. Thank you a lot for your attention. Next scene is soon to come. So now let you subscribe this video so that you will gain the next presentation. Thank you a lot.